<laughs> but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be in Vim the whole time anyway. So, <laughs> oh, what is? Come on, come on. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So, welcome to my lightning talk. Um, I'm going to tell you about a cool feature in the Glasgow Haskell compiler called rewrite rules, uh, sometimes also known as transformation rules. Um, so I'm just going to open up rewrite.hs. And we're going to, um, so this is a program that uh, just takes a list and reverses it twice and, and shows us the first five things out of the list and prints that, and that's all this program does. Um, yeah, stack. So if we run this program, um, yeah, it's just going to print one, two, three, four, five, um, like we expect. Um, but reversing a list twice is is rather a silly thing to do, isn't it? Because it's an involutive function. The reverse of the reverse of something is the same thing that you put in. So we can write uh, a rewrite rule with the rules pragma um, to make this thing disappear while we compile. Uh, so just give it a name. We'll just call it revinvolutive or something like that. And um, we put a left-hand side, which is what it looks for, and a right-hand side, which is what it will replace it with. Um, and yeah, if I build this now, the programs you know compile and do the same thing. Um, if I put something else here, um, that's going to. <laughs> Um, it's going to be a type error, right? So this is actually um, hooked in with the type system. So it's not just a, a literal, you know, look for this thing in the AST and replace it, but it's all type checked. Um, cool. So um, if we, well, I'm not going to do it, but if I was to dump the core, you would see that this reverse has been completely written out of the program and um, it just has ID. Um, in my program before I put in the rewrite rule, um, this will use up all of my CPU and memory and um, running it would be a very dangerous thing to do. But um, now I can take the reverse of the reverse of an infinite list as well. So not only have I um, made a small optimization in my program, but I've in fact expanded the scope of the things that my program will successfully terminate on <laughs> Which is a very positive way of saying to change the semantics. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not get technical, Dave. Um, so, uh, this is um, the rewrite rules feature is used. There's all sorts of rules shipped in the base library for things like map fusion. So, an example of what that rule would be like is um, yeah, I'm just re implementing something that um, it already knows about and is exported in the prelude, but it'd be something like um, for all f, g, and x, um, map f, map g, x is going to be map um, f compose g, x. And um, so that will uh, basically replace two uh, traversals of the structure with uh, a single one running the composition of f and g um, Against each uh, element in the structure. Is so, that point free, or does it need to have the x? Ah, now that's a very good question. Um, so, for example, with the reverse, if I was to write a rule like um, for all l reverse reverse l is l, that's actually a separate rule, and it's look, going to look for something different. Um, this is where conflicts with inlining comes in. So for example, um, in my program, if I um, no longer had this rewrite rule, there's a high probability that compose is going to get inlined, and then it's um, not going to um, realize that it can apply this rule. So then you have to do other things like, um, <coughs> you sometimes need to be tricky about um, forcing rules to trigger at different stages of compilation in order to get all of the optimizations. But the, there are rules that typically, they try to apply them at each of four or five stages of compilation. Um, it's just that sometimes you need to um, force things to happen in the right order to get the optimizations. 
Can, now, you, can you see that? Uh, yes, you can. So there's a there's an option called um, D dump simple iterations or something like that, where you can see this the uh, core output at every stage of simplification, and that produces a hell of a lot of output. I'm not going to show it to you now. But you can also do um, yeah, you can print the rule firing, so if I, do, I can show you that, because yeah. that's a bit smaller. Um, so, options, um, GHC, D-dump, rule firings, and if I compile this with GHC, you have to turn on optimization, uh, and the name of the file, yeah, we can see here that my rule has been fired. Yeah. Okay, so something cool that you can do with rewrite rules, aside from all the cool things that I've already shown you, is um, specialization. So here is a, a, another small program. This is going to use um, Criterion to benchmark this function, two sorted list, which takes any foldable structure and basically two lists it and then sorts the list. Um, so in, the, in general, this is going to be um, the worst case of, in terms of computational complexity, um, the worst of whatever two list is and whatever sort is for the particular type um, at which this function is applied. Um, so I'm building a set with the integers from 10,000 uh, down to one. I'm actually forcing the evaluation of that set so the construction of the set doesn't conflate, confound the results of the benchmark. Then I'm calling two sorted list and taking the first five things off the sorted list um, and fully um, forcing that to normal form. And that is what the benchmark is. So if I compile and run this, so I think I just need to run it and stack exec. Specialize. Uh, yes, no edges. So it's benchmarking that. And we can see that with the default implementation, um, it takes about 400 microseconds. However, we know that um, the set is actually going to two list in sorted order already because of the, the structure of the set. So we can define a more specialized function for two sorted list set, um, which will be defined simply as two list. Uh, we'll get rid of our foldable t from the context, and it'll be a set a to list a. And then if we add a rewrite rule, uh, rules, whatever, it's just a name, and uh, two sorted list is defined as two sorted list set. Now, um, whenever GHC sees two sorted list instantiated at the type of two sorted list set, it will substitute the uh, alternative implementation. So if I uh, stack, build and run this again, Just take a moment. And this time it takes 218 nanoseconds instead, so that's a, uh, a big win. <laughs> so, free write rules are awesome. Go forth and use them in your Haskell programs and enjoy the uh, easy wins. Thanks. Yes. How many pages of core do you have to read to actually be able to write the proper rewrite rules? and get your program organized. <laughs> it depends on your program, but if my talk for, uh, for Compose, Compose Melbourne um, gets accepted, that's the sort of stuff I'll be going through, and I'll actually be doing showing some examples of where the rewrite rules are triggering in the wrong order and we're not getting the optimizations we desire, and then we force things to happen um, in particular orders in order to get the optimizations. Cool. Cool. Yeah,